how to create the perfect steak. And of course, <laughs> Jason is gonna walk us through all the tips. Yep, just come to my restaurant, I'll cook it for you. No, Very good. <laughs> Easy, uh, it's you perfect. Know, but I think the thing is though is, we are masters of the barbecue, mm -hmm. you know? And I know that I'm one of them. There's some of us that it's minus 40 degrees outside and we're still out there barbecuing <laughs> away. But you can do a nice pan roasted steak too. But there are some tips that really are necessary in order to get that nice browning, that nice flavor. And more importantly, you know, it's kind of like the potatoes we were talking earlier. You know, again, when you heat things up, juice will release. You yeah. know, we do a big roast, we let it rest. We do a turkey, we let it rest. Do we let our steaks rest? Most of us don't. Right. You know, right? We're no, just, I know. It's you coming off and you're cutting after, and you're yeah. eating. And yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> number one, start off with some good meat, like good quality meat. You know, go, get to know your butcher. You know, take him out for dinner or something. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, just <laughs> really get to know them. Bring him a bottle of wine. No, <laughs> but uh, don't get into frozen meat. It's not always the best because when you freeze things, it takes on moisture. When you defrost it, it releases. So when you put it in a pan, it's not going to brown as nice. Right. Okay. But the other thing is, and I always love Julia Child for this one because you, you first you have to dry off the meat, right? <laughs> but it's so true. We don't do this. You know, you have to dry the meat off, right? right? Because Show it some love. Yeah. You know, if you want to, you know, Just cuddle with it for a while, it's okay. Wow. <laughs> but also, a lot of us will go, okay, oh yeah, I'm getting ready to cook steaks. <clears throat> Season it up, and then take off for a bit. Come back ten minutes later. Well, what does salt do? It pulls the moisture out. So again, ah. it's going to dry your steak out. Right. So what I like to do is just dry it off first. Uh -huh. And then I've already got one started here, but I take a little bit of grapeseed oil. Sounds good, doesn't it? And I put the That's oil in the pan and bring the heat up. I don't heat the pan and oh, then throw really? the oil in. Okay. Because the pan's really hot. You don't know it's hot. You put the oil in. Splash. You got smoke detectors going off. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's nice to kind of just have control, but yeah. you want a very, very hot pan. Okay. And then again, as you see, and always, you know, the tips are get it's the oil nice moving, put it away from you so if the oil splashes, it splashes up on your guests and not you. Perfect. Um, <laughs> and then I've got really crunchy, <laughs> chunky salt, you know, and I'm seasoning it here crunchy black pepper, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the other day we were on the show, we were talking about sumac, a little bit of sumac on there would be great, yeah. some cool spices, but you gotta leave it alone. People got tend it. to, okay, I got it in, I gotta turn it over. Leave Don't it touch cooked. it. And then after a few minutes, you just turn it over and look at that. Look at the beautiful and you, sear. You only do that once, huh? Yeah, and that's oh, been don't there. Keep flipping and flopping nope. and flipping and flopping. <laughs> you shaky. No. What you're doing is just you're actually once. cooking it 40% on one side. Okay. 40% on the other side. Yeah. And 20% resting. Oh, so more resting. Yep. Okay. You know, so and cooking is happening while it's resting. Oh, for sure. You know, if you like your steaks medium, they should be coming off the pan or off the barbecue at medium rare. Right. And we always say they coax into the finish, but roll them into the finish, mm -hmm. and you're gonna get a lot moister, tender Standard, steak. Yeah. And what if you like them well done? Uh -huh. <laughs> then leave you go to his yeah. restaurant. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. 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 His restaurant. No, actually, we know how to cook meat. Okay, you know what though? If you want it well done. <laughs> Cook it slower okay. for a longer period of yeah. time yeah. because it still can be juicy even though it's it well done. So on a lower heat? Yeah, lower heat. Mm. Because if you do it too fast, mm -hmm. then what happens is it dries it out. Okay. So you can still do it well done. All right. But that's so the perfect that's, steak. That's a good smelling yeah. and looking steak. Let's do a little side now for the steak. It doesn't Ooh. even look like a side because you've done it so beautifully we over there. We are busy here. We are We're busy doing a here. Cold oh smell. man. You know what? I need a shipping out of that, guys. I'm coming down to see you, Tracy, because that's just the way it is. Come on down. Right. So here's what we're going to do. What do you want from me Come to do? Come on over here. A coleslaw is basically so versatile, it can be anything. What I prefer is basically whatever's in the fridge. Okay. In That'd my fridge. Yeah, you're fine. What do you want, Julianne here? Yeah, a little Julianne, it's fine. I like to have a celery act. Celery act's earthy, it's tasty, it's cheap as chips, and it's just, it's it's very underused. Okay. Um, it has this great kind of nutty, earthy flavor to it, but also stays crisp. But every coleslaw needs cabbage. So here's where the Brussels sprouts come in. We got the boys, baby but the boys working away. Okay. I need you to peel those cabbages, Tracy. Just peel them leaf by leaf. I already took leaf. the roots out, right? Just leaf by leaf into the bowl they go. That I you can know do. what? I didn't show up today with a pre-made slaw. I figured if we've got three of the best chefs around and the foxiest host around, we Are should they... be able to bust out a slaw in three minutes. What really? do you guys think? Absolutely. I you got back somewhere? <laughs> Foxy. So. Everything can be different kind of textures as well. I've just got a truffle slicer here. I'm running through some, some radishes. Mm -hmm. By hand, he's got a slicer. Right? I, I know, I, what do you mean? I've never seen carrot. this before. We're all actually working. Isn't this nice? It feels like a production <laughs> kitchen. I'm going to be serving this later on. Pick up on table 12. Think oh, of the God. labor costs right now. That's a of the deal, man. <laughs> Take a lot of anchovies. <laughs> OK, 
okay, you guys so are looking good doing it. You, what, like, you can put, you can put pretty much anything you, can you put want anything in your, uh, in your coleslaw. But cold as we were saying earlier, it's January, yeah. so there's no such thing as mayonnaise in January. No, not at all. Everyone's allowed. on their diet, everyone's doing things, and this is where we come up with the aromatics. Yeah. So now it's time, everybody, I'll just take it in here, yeah? Give me a community bowl. Wow. You got a community right. bowl here? Tracy, beautiful Brussels sprouts. Right, in nice. they go, just little leaves. Massimo, you, go, you know what, I think Massimo won. He's got the largest amount of volume. I think, yeah, he's Good making stuff. for his own stomach, right? He's going, okay. Well, oh. You're the one carrying the suitcase. Oh. The hits keep coming, Whoa. ladies and gentlemen. Come on, Kegger. <laughs> <laughs> we all love each other, really, we do. Oh, come on, so what are you we, doing? We, we, big happy we steal a little bit of crunchy salt, okay. right? Mm. A little bit of pepper, Massimo, mm. can you give me some of that nice olive oil? The Italian one? The Spanish one? No. Just okay. saying. <laughs> I'm waiting for the English one. That A little olive oil. You right? got it. It's like some grease. Some expensive mustard. The yeah. French mustard. It's a That's clod. not mustard. That's not mustard. No. That's the mustard. Jason, give me yeah. a scoop, please. Mm. And then to go with the apples, because the celery act and the apples is like a marriage. They meant for each other. They're going to be together forever. We have a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> right? So now you have the sweetness of the apples, a little bit of the acidity from the apple cider vinegar, that. the salt, the pepper. We got some basil in there for a little bit of earthy oh, tones. How do you make it look like that, though? <laughs> Oh, so then, what do you do with this slaw is the question. Yes, you can put it beside a steak, you can put it with a fish and chips, you can put it over top of a kale I salad. Well, this has been a little beat up, so we'll Here. fix this baby up. There we go. Well, you know, uh, Here we go. Here we sorry, go. man. You're all what good. What are those? So this is just, I was going to make bagels, but then I said, you know what, I kind of love puff pastry. We don't oh. have any mayonnaise in here. So why don't we put some really healthy smoked salmon on there, right? That's smart. A little bit of this celery apple slaw. Mm-hmm. We call that a smoked salmon puff pastry oh, and apple beautiful. slaw slider. Oh mm. my gosh, that was such what? a good idea. It just happened. It went Malking. from a side dish to a main Somebody meal. was saying they needed to go for lunch. I <laughs> right there. I think it's time for lunch. <laughs> Cityline.ca, people, brilliant. <laughs>